Um, hello, uh, we'll start with lecture nine, which we are in which we are going to cover chapter 10. Um, in this lecture, we are going to be talking about comparison of two populations. Up to this point, except one uh, case in, in, in lecture six, which I'm going to give you the link, it was always about a single population. And from that single population, we took a single sample and we try to we try to come up with some inferences about population mean, population proportion, and population variance depending on the distribution. So that was basically the idea here. In this chapter, we are going to do a similar thing, but this time we are going to be considering two populations. Therefore, we are going to be basically comparing two population parameters, the same population, the same parameter in both populations. And we are going to be asking the question whether population one mean is equal to population two mean or population uh, proportion one is equal to population proportion two or one of them is greater or less than the other one. Now, when it comes to comparing two populations, two populations, there is an um, additional question, uh, which is actually uh, non-mathematical at first sight, but it has also some uh, mathematical fundament, uh, fundamentals, but we are not going to go into that. But uh, a, a, a serious problem uh, that we need to consider. So when it was a single population, we did not consider this problem, and there's a reason for that, which I'll try to explain. So basically, for instance, the, the questions that we solved up to this point were things like uh, the rainfall, daily amount of rainfall or daily arsenic concentration, or let's say active ingredient concentration of our daily batches. So these were actually some example questions I, I can think of, or the in a bottle filling process, the liquid heights or liquid volumes. So here in those questions, actually, as an experimenter, you cannot interfere with the experiment. You should just observe. What do I mean by that? For instance, if we are going to determine, if we are going to estimate the mean rainfall, daily rainfall in a certain uh, region, what you only need to do is you are going to collect randomly sampled uh, daily rainfall amounts. That's all that you are going to do as the conductor of the experiment. Once you conduct these values, then you are going to uh, employ the statistical methods that we have talked about, t-test, chi-square test, all these things that we have talked about. Or when it comes to, for instance, we have a factory and we would like to estimate the mean uh, active gradient uh, ingredient in our products, uh, therefore, what you do is you actually let your comp, let your factory run as it always runs, and you randomly select some of your products, and those from those products you measure the active ingredient co content and concentration, then you do all these tests. So these are going to be what we call observational studies. And in those kind of studies I talked about, observation studies is the only method. Actually, there is nothing else that you need, you can do and you need to do. Actually, you cannot interfere with rainfall. And if you are going to, if you need to learn the active ingredient amount in your uh, batches or in your products during normal operation, then you have to co continue with your normal operation and just do the measurement. On the other hand, there may be some cases, especially when it comes to comparing two things, this is not the case. First, let me talk about where the same approach will still be applicable. For instance, uh, we may have two different factors, or there are two different factories, and we would just like to compare the active ingredient uh, concentration in their products during their normal operation period. So they are going to produce the, the, the products, manufacture the products uh, as they always uh, do. And we sample from both factories and we are going to apply the techniques we are going to learn in this chapter. And actually statistically, they are going to be almost identical to what we have done previously. There is going to be nothing statistically uh, very much different here. On the other hand, let's talk about a different problem. Let that problem be something like this. 
let's say that we are a tire uh, manufacturer and we would like to test the performance of these tires. So the experimental plan that we come up with is something like this. We are going to put these tires in a, in a very good sports car, right? Uh, and we are going to get one of the best drivers uh, in the world and let he or she drive this car with these wheels on, with the tires on, and let the car go for, let's say, one kilometer on a perfect uh, plain road. Okay, then we are going to do this a couple of times, repeat this experiment, let's say, and let's do these experiments also on a sunny day with no rain, with no snow. So the best car, the best driver, uh, very nice weather conditions and what else on a very good on very good road conditions and then when you repeat this experiment then you are going to let's say the, 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 the variable that we are going to measure is going to be how long does it take for uh, the driver and the car with those tires on uh, to, to, to go from zero to one kilometers uh, what's the time it takes to reach one kilometers and we would like to estimate the population mean of that uh, of that variable. So what we can do is we let the driver drive this car on different days, for instance, let's say 10 and 12 or 20 times or whatever, n is equal to something. Then we can come up with an x bar value and with some confidence intervals, or we may have an hypothesis test such that mu is equal to something and mu is not equal to that value. Anyway. But now let's be a little bit more specific here. Here, what would mu correspond to? Would it exactly correspond to the uh, performance of the tire? Or would it correspond to performance of the tire plus performance of the driver plus performance of the car plus uh, very good weather conditions and road conditions? So here's what I would like to mention here. When it comes to testing different treatments and here tire a specific tire will be a certain treatment you also need at least a specimen on which to use this treatment so another thing another typical case may be a treatment related with medicine let's say let's say that we are going to take we are going to come up with a pill that's going to make you feel better against a certain disease but not that that pill is not going to be sufficient to make the test. You also need at least a person, a human being, so that you are going to give that to him or her and he or she is going to take the pill and uh, going to get feel better or maybe not. And there are going to be other conditions here, that the, uh, whether that, that person is a male or female, uh, his or her age, which age are we talking about? And also uh, the, the, the surroundings condition is maybe a very hot uh, weather is there and that, is a, a, that affects the, the viruses that we are trying to uh, prevent the person from. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, I, at, the, at the very beginning I talked about and also the, 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 the conditions that we have uh, discussed up to this point in example questions were uh, can be easily handled by what we call observational studies. You just observe and you collect data and you can say that, that, that those observations can capture a population parameter of that uh, event, I may say. On the other hand, when we are talking about a treatment and that treatment is a specific, that treatment may be changed from case to case and we would like to especially understand the population characteristics of a certain treatment, you have to apply that treatment on a specimen in a surrounding. And then that surrounding and that specimen will affect the results. Therefore, the results cannot be only confined or cannot be assumed to only due to that treatment. Now, this brings actually a problem when it comes to comparing different types of treatments. Let me continue with the same example. If we are going to test another tire. Now here is a problem. And again, the test statistic will be, or the, the population parameter that we would like to test is, how long does it take for a car equipped with those tires to reach 
one kilometer, from zero to one kilometer. I don't know whether that makes sense. I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of these racing cars. I just made up this story. But anyway, so if you have a car tire A and B, how are you going to compare them? Now, in for, for tire air, if you use the best car with the best driver on wonderful um, uh, weather and road conditions, and if you do not do the same thing for tire B, then you are going to have a problem because what you are comparing would not be the population parameters of or the, the effects of tire A and B, but effects of tire A plus all the conditions on which all the specimen, we hear specimen may be the car itself, but we may also think about the driver and all these conditions. So all that package will be compared with the other package. And however, that's not what we would like to compare. We would not like, we would not, we do not like to compare all the, these uh, surrounding conditions. We would only like to compare these treatments. Then what we are going to do. So for these cases, observational studies will not be sufficient. So what do I mean by that? If somebody comes up with some results, let's say 10 results of 10 different one kilometers of these runs, how long does it take to reach that one kilometer for tire A? These are the results, he or she says, and these are the results for tire B. Then we should ask the question, under which conditions these results are obtained, these tests are conducted? Without any question, if you take them, that would be an observational study and for these cases where you apply treatments to different specimen, observation study will not give a, 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 a reliable estimate for population parameters. That's basically the core of this chapter. We are going to do, again deal with some part of the statistics, but statistics will be easy. And I um, actually, I give uh, to, to give you an idea about how much importance I give to this specific topic here. If you just forget about everything that you have learned in this course, or maybe you haven't learned in this course, but if there is only one thing left, it should be that topic, observational versus the so-called randomized studies that I'm going to be talking about uh, in a couple of minutes. So the results from observational studies, if you would like to compare two populations with, uh, to, to, uh, with different treatments, then observational studies will not be reliable. And that's a very, um, it is a hot topic also in our daily lives due to that, that coronavirus incident. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, these as the chapter goes on. So basically, this is going to be a kind of summary of what I said. Engineers and statistics are always or often interested in comparing two different conditions to determine whether either condition produced a significant effect on the observed response. While the typical case is, for instance, commercials, right? There is a certain detergent A and detergent B. Which one is better is the question. Well, better here probably would correspond to have a more cleaning power, but there may be also other issues. But let's say only cleaning power then how can you come up with a, a reliable test procedure to test this? If again, somebody comes and tells you that, okay, this, however the cleaning power is measured in terms of a variable, these are the results from detergent A, these are the results for detergent P. If without any asking question about the details of the experiment, if you take these two values and do a, uh, a, t, a, a t test, which we are going to talk about, for instance, okay, is going to be the whole thing is going to be the, 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 all, the conclusion that's going to be reached. If you do not ask anything about the, the, the experiment and you don't have any, anything about the experiments, how they are conducted, they are not going to be statistically valid. So that's an interesting point. So all, only giving the tabulated values and apply the statistical procedure would not be valid statistically. So let's continue. Now these conditions are called treatments here. So uh, different conditions compare, so there are different treatments. When it comes to uh, issues related with medicine, treatment also is a treatment to, uh, employed to apply to a person to make him or her better free of that sickness. But generally treatment may be anything. For instance, as an engineer, you may be interested in uh, comparing two different raw materials. You put a certain raw material, uh, right, to produce a chemical, a plastic, 
whatever then and you are not uh, the, you are not fond of the results of the performance of the product that you may, that you produce then what you do is or what you would like to do is there is a potential raw material b so that you are going to put in your material instead of a and it's going to work out better maybe so that's what you would like to test so raw material a and b would be different treatments but note that you cannot just take raw material A and B and compare them. You are going to apply these treatments onto something. You are going to be mixed with other chemicals. You are going to use uh, uh, some equipment to mold it up, to, to put it into a certain shape, to uh, finalize the product. So all the rest of the stuff will be specimen, right? On a, sim single, on a simple example of treatments, Related with medicine, it is very easy that there is going to be a pill, a certain treatment is going to be applied to a patient. Treatment applied to a specimen. Then the properties of the specimen are, of course, is going to be very important, but because the difference between specimen, like different ages of the human beings on which that treatment is applied, is going to, may affect the result. There, on the other hand, what you would like to, uh, determine is only isolate the effects of treatments, uh, not specimen. So how are we going to differentiate these two? That may be the question here. So if the specimen are assigned randomly to treatments, then this experiment has method completely randomized experiment. So actually that is the solution uh, first uh, properly proposed by again Ronald Fisher. The idea is, instead of observational studies, and when I say observational study, I mean, again, let the system go and see what it comes out kind of thing. And I said that in some cases, this is the only way that data is going to be produced. And that may be actually valid when it comes to rainfall into a certain region. That's exactly what you want to obtain. Observe two different regions, do nothing, and then you collect the data. But even during that procedure, we have to take randomly uh, selected data points, randomly selected days, I may say. But I'm not going to go into that random selection of uh, different days because this is related with the meaning of the random, which is a little bit of a, uh, not very deep, but uh, it's, I think it's that much detail is unnecessary here. But when it comes to treatments with specimen or those kind of things, what we are going to do is, we are going to assign the specimen if these are the specimen. And we have two treatments here. And I think, I hope right now, treatment and specimen difference is obvious. Treatments are the things, are the conditions which we would like to compare. And specimen would be the things, would be the entities on which these uh, treatments would be employed so that we can uh, realize the final result. So what we are going to do is, we are going to randomly assign, for instance, this one, this one, this one to one, and this one, and these two ones to do to two. We are going to do this random assignment, and it's not going to be that much straightforward and easy in real life, but uh, this is going to be just an introduction. And these kind of assignment of specimen to treatments are called completely randomized experiments or simply randomized experiments. So these are versus observational studies. So what is the observational study ver uh, version of this one, this, this case? These specimen with the treatment one just comes to you and these guys with the treatment two just comes to you, you just accept them and then you measure whatever you have to measure, then you compare them. This is going to be the result due to an observational study and the statistical consequences of that or the, the conclusions reached from the, uh, such an observational study are seriously in doubt or in question. All right, in randomized experiment, different response can be attributed to difference in treatments that cause and effect relation can be determined. So you may ask, Actually, what's the big deal about this randomized experiment? Why do we take these specimen and randomly assign these to different treatments? What's the effect of this randomization concept? Well, when you do that, 
the resulting difference between one and two can be attributed to a difference in their cause and effects relationship. What do I mean by that? Let's go back to the tire example. If instead of letting people decide uh, the best car being, okay, let's say that we have a couple of cars. This one here is one car, I'm sorry for my drawing. To show that they are different from each other, I'm going to be using some funny kind of cars and, and another one, okay, this one is, we have three types of cars. This is the great sports car. This is all right. And this is uh, a, a kind of not very expensive, a pretty much economic, but not very, having not a very high performance car kind of. And we have also some drivers. Now this is a very good driver showing it's also its helmet, right? We have another driver here who's a typical driver and we have, I don't know, another driver, a couple of, of these drivers. And some of them have helmets showing that they are professionals, uh, professional drivers. Uh, okay, let's not too much caricaturize this. And we have two types of wheels here. Let me change the color here. We have tire A and we have tire B. And some, we would like to compare the performance, whatever that performance index is going to between these two wheels, of these two wheels. Now note that we are going to be using these drivers with those cars. And we are going to be using wheels on those cars. So these are going to be, these certain combinations will be specified. Now note that, just assume that, this is a very good driver which specific to this car. So if somehow A and B are all conducted with this combination of this specimen, then its performance is going to be very high. And one may think that the whole uh, cause of that performance is due to A here, real A. So cause and effect relation is this one. On the other hand, that's not the case. So to uh, summer, to, to view only the cause and a cause of a and B on the performance, what we do is, but one option that we can do is call this A, B, and C, and call this one, two, three, and four. Select randomly one of A, B, and C. For instance, B has come out to be, and randomly select among these two is three. So B3 is going to be, again, select randomly one of those two. And A car, and a, 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 so this is, this be small a, b, c, so it's better. Car b, lowercase b, with the driver tree is going to be using an, a tire a. Note that there is also the road conditions, weather conditions, they are going to complicate the whole thing. You have to also include them maybe in your randomization procedure. There is also something that called blocking that we are going to consider uh, probably in the next lecture. Anyway, A will be used, so this is going to be the whole package. So you measure whatever you have to measure and you come up with some value. And you do this again a couple of times for A. Let's say that we have also A and two, right? You come up with a result and you do the same thing for B. And at the end, you have a couple of results for A and for B or whatever, but this is going to be due to a randomized experiment. So all of the specimen are randomly assigned to treatments or treatments are randomly assigned to specimen. In this case, the difference between the population parameters between those two will be due to the effects of A and B. If you do not do that, but if you just let the system go in itself, let's say this driver is a, uh, uh, now, what do I mean by let the system go by itself? Uh, this may be one case where you may have observational studies. Let's say this is a famous driver and he's of course rich. So he uses the best of these cars in his daily life. So if you just go and uh, ask this person, just give me, and he, let's say that he has been using tire A. So give me your daily statistics for different days 
just give me the values of these uh, times it takes for you to reach one kilometer, 100 meter, whatever. And he gives us these values. So this is going to be for tire A. And for tire B, let's say that this is a, 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 a non-professional driver who has been using this car with tire B. And if you again go this person and ask, tell us uh, for different days your performance with tire B, he or she is going to list our performance, then these are going to be observational data. because the specimen or the treatments are not assigned randomly. And note that I come up with a story, back, uh, a backing story to, to explain the whole thing. And that backing story is important. Now, this guy is probably rich and, and he's also a professional driver, right? So he, he, he is a, a more proficient uh, in driving compared to regular people. So a performance of car or any equipment related with that is expected to be better. And he has also been using the best car. So the, the, the additional the, uh, equipment that's been used with the car also is going to have a, probably going to have a high performance. Therefore, the results here cannot be assigned due to the or causally uh, related to A alone. There are other uh, variables here inside this specific uh, conditions of the specimen. And again, with respect, when you talk about B, it's the very same thing here. Well, when it comes to tires, maybe it's not that much important. Let me uh, also read this uh, sentence, then I'm going to talk about the more interesting case. In observation study, on the other hand, population is observed only, is only observed and data from the process are recorded. And as I said, that's okay for some cases, for some events like rainfall, whether or your daily uh, production uh, routine or the, the uh, active ingredient amount in your products. But in some cases like comparing treatments, it's not okay. Treatments are not assigned to random specimen, but specimen with the, with the existing treatments are taken as they are. Now, it is difficult to identify causality in observational studies. That's a very important thing, and that's something that most of the people, including engineers, uh, maybe in their own studies they use that, but in our daily lives they, 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 lives, they forgot this idea, and they do not use it. It's a very important thing. Now, since the observed statistical difference in response may be due to some underlying factor, what we call confounding variable, since actually, the specimens are also drastically different in those different treatments. The causal relation may be due to some of the properties of that specimen. And those properties, which are which seem to be hidden there, or maybe it's apparent there, but I cannot see, but that factor that affects the result is called the confounding variable, which has not been equalized by randomization. Note that when you apply randomization, there is equal change, uh, probability of having, let's say there is a factor here, which a, a positive factor, which is going to increase the performance. There is another factor. There are a couple of these factors which are likely to increase performance, such as a better car, a better driver, and some of these factors which are going to decrease the performance. When you randomize these, uh, and if you have a sufficient number of samples, then it's going to be uh, pretty much likely that both the, both the treatments will have uh, uh, an uh, almost equal or close number of, of these uh, good or bad confounding variables for both treatments. So therefore, what we, what we expect is actually note that when the small sample size is small, this is not going to be the case. So there are certain variations on that theme. Yet if you have a sufficiently large sample size, the, those specimen effects, those confounding variable effects will cancel out because since we randomly assign that, some of the good ones will be here on, uh, will be employed with treatment A and it's going to be some of the bad ones also will be employed with treatment A and the same thing for treatment B. So a more interesting case I think is this one. Effect of vitamin pills on health is to be investigated. Instead of vitamin pills, you can think of coronavirus uh, vaccine, anything that's related with medicine. Now, 
a typical observational study is something like this. Observe how the health of 50 people who regularly take vitamin pills develops in time. Observe the health of another 50 people who do not take vitamin pills. So what you do is something like that. You just uh, do something like a poll or uh, to, in a hospital, you uh, uh, ask people to fill a form. And in that form, it is asked uh, whether they take regularly vitamin pills or not. And let's say that the first 50, that number 50 is not important, but those who take uh, vitamin pills, right? These are the guys who take vitamin pills and these are the guys who do not take the vitamin pills. So based on this, so let's see that we would like to test the hypothesis that uh, vitamin pills are effective in, uh, in, in uh, uh, inhaling or uh, exhaling of people. I'm just making up the whole thing, but you have to come up with some, uh, some property of humans. So something related with health. So call it anything that you like. So we would like to compare some mu, mu one and mu two value of those two populations. So there's a certain hypothesis. Let's say that the people who take the vitamin has a higher mu one value. And that's what we would like to test using these populations. Will this, be, will this test be valid? Now from a strict statistical point of view, if you were to ask for instance, Ronald Fisher, no. I'm sure of that because actually Ronald Fisher has uh, pretty much uh, controver controversies about especially uh, smoking cigarette issue. That's an issue maybe I'll talk about later. But uh, he would say that these two groups cannot be assigned based on this observational study. We just ask the people who come to a hospital and they just fill the form whether they take vitamin pills or not. You may say at first sight, okay, this seems like a pretty much uh, proper investigation or research. It is not. It might be the case that, for instance, the people who are already healthy uh, are, let's say, uh, they can afford vitamin pills. So the confounding variable may be money here. And people who have money are both healthy and they can also afford vitamin pills. So here is the interesting thing. When you actually ask this question without randomizing the groups, what you do is you just ask this question here and find the people who take vitamin pills and see that they are also more healthy, whatever the variable uh, population mean we are talking about. Then you may say that, okay, uh, vitamin pill causes healthiness. This is incorrect. By the way, I'm just, I don't know anything about the vitamin fields. They are healthy. I just make up the story in terms of uh, uh, health signs. So please uh, pardon me for that. But try to understand the, the logic I'm talking about. But actually here, this money is the confounding variable. So there is actually no, there may be no direct causation here. But since you are not taking this account by using an observer, observational study, you seem to think that there is such a relation between those two. There may be other issues. Just for instance, let's say vitamin pills, uh, pills taste awful. And let's say that there is another factor, people, uh, uh, let's say, who uh, uh, do not like to have pain, they are not going to take no vitamin pills and the very same people also do not like to exercise. And due to that, not healthy. Now note the causal connection here. They don't like to have pain, they don't exercise, they are not healthy. But due to the very same reason, again, again, I'm just making this up, they do not take any vitamin pills but because it tastes awful. However, when you take an observational study, you do not see anything related with this hidden variable here, confounding variable. What you see here, 
no um, uh, vitamin pills, and not healthy. So you would think that there is such a causal relationship. But as you can see, the causal relationship, there is no causal relationship here. So whether under these conditions, whether you uh, agree that person to take vitamin pills or not, would not change anything because he or she would not still be exercising. Oh, by the way, it should also be questionable that whether there is an, a relation, cause relation between those two. Maybe this would seem very obvious to you, but no relation should seem very obvious to you. All of these cause relations in science are always in dispute. So, say that health of the former group is found to be significantly better than the other one. Are you justifying assi assigning causality between vitamin pills and good health? Generally, no. That's what I, want, I, want, I wanted to say. There are studies like, for instance, um, uh, um, whether especially related with the coronavirus incident, for instance, they take uh, samples or from the uh, sick people, they find their blood groups and they find whether, or, uh, whether they are coronavirus infected or not, or whether how long does it take to recover for, from coronavirus. So they want to find relations between blood types and recovery from coronavirus, recovery from virus. Now note that these kind of, again, relations are observational studies again. So there may be a causal relation, uh, I, I agree, but as far as I know, please check it, I might be mistaken, but the first studies seem to show that there is a relation, but they say that this is actually a correlation not necessarily a causal relation. And now actually, I think the relation between blood type and uh, the, the effect of coronavirus, that effect is totally, I, I think that doctors, I, I, as far as I know, do not consider this issue for anymore. It might have been otherwise, and maybe it's otherwise, that's not the point that I'm talking of. As long as you have an observational study, the resulting correlation, note that might be mistakenly taken as a causal relation. But there's a very nice uh, uh, saying, it is correlation does not necessarily imply causation. If you forget everything about this lecture, please at least remember this concept. So from observational studies, and unfortunately, especially in uh, studies related with health issues are mostly about observational studies. It is always doubtful about the results that we find. We might find statistically significant correlations, but they do not necessarily mean causation. Well, for causation, there, may, there must be a, at least a theoretical linear or maybe nonlinear correlation. And maybe in some cases due to the high level of noise, it's not going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be difficult to observe it. Yet, uh, every correlation does not mean causation due to those confounding variables. So in a randomized experiment, how would you have uh, perform this experiment and that gives an idea why it's difficult to design randomized experiment when it comes to health issues. We are going to we are going to apply for an uh, we are going to uh, post uh, an uh, an experiment to the people and we are going to say that whoever would like to uh, uh, be included in this experiment please uh, apply. And out of, let's say, 100 people that has applied, we randomly divide these people into two groups. While still this is not exactly how it's done, there are going to be some uh, adjustment due to uh, the male or being female or uh, the, whichever uh, age group you belong to. There are some adjustments, but these are out of the uh, scope of this course. Basically, uh, you do not let the people decide whether to take pills or not, but you randomly assign to each uh, person uh, in, your, in, in two different groups and make sure that one group will regularly take vitamin pills for a period of time. And another point here is, just assume such a scenario, 
again, this tastes awful, this vitamin pill, and a person who takes this also takes after that or starts taking sugar related or chocolate or things like that. And assume that this chocolate is bad for your health. So here's the interesting issue. If you do not control for that change in their lifestyle after taking those pills, because uh, previously they did not use that much of chocolate or sugar, but due to that taking those pills and it, it tastes awful, they started using this, their health starts to deteriorate. So here's the thing, actually, when you look at, actually, if you do not consider this uh, change of diet here due to the uh, awful taste of the pill, then you would think that there is a causal relation between taking these pills and health going down, but actually causal relation is between the chocolate or uh, sugar and health. So it is, when it comes to humans, it is pretty much difficult to come up with uh, randomized experiments. When it's, you are a chemist and you are dealing, mix, mixing different stuff, it is easy. You can randomize much, much more easily. But, uh, or when you are, you are using lab animals. But when you are experimenting with humans, humans can easily change their way of living. And you have to make sure that there is no change in their uh, lifestyle uh, when they start with this, this, this experimentation procedure. And we observed out of these two groups, then we conduct the hypothesis test, and then the result may be deemed to be a causal result due to the vitamin, uh, vitamin pills. Okay, one another point here, in real life, there is what we call placebo here. Now, it's not going to be these two people, when they are divided into two, we give these people a pill and we do not give a people to these 50 people uh, any pills. That's not the case that we do. We give these 50 people a placebo, which is actually the same pill, but without any active ingredient here. So it is, uh, uh, it may be sugar or something which tastes bad, but it's not going to have any active material, any active ingredient in there. So it's not going to be efficient. And the result and the idea is to, to, to um, counteract against psychological factors. That placebo effect is a very interesting thing in its own. And uh, that's, I think, sufficient. All right. So, as I said, correlation does not imply causation. A very kind of funny uh, example is it is from a paper that you can uh, find on the internet. Uh, Stokes, uh, Stokes Delivery Babies, which is in Teaching Statistics Journal. Now, this is the number of Stokes breeding pairs, and these are birth rates, human birth rates, are plotted uh, with respect to the number of stork uh, breeding pairs for different countries. I think that was in Europe. And when you draw this diagram, there seems to be a positive correlation between those two. So, one may naively, and the correlation is 0 0.62. Well, although the correlation is uh, due to the scattering here and due to only these two points here, that's why correlation has come out to be equal to 0 0.62. So, it's, uh, it's that factor there that uh, non-robustness of the correlation is an issue. Still, one may tend to say that since these are correlated, then storks deliver babies is an reasonable assumption. Storks, there are babies. So in countries, right, when we plot number of babies with respect to the number of storks or some variable related to storks, we obtain a positive correlation. So there is a causation in this manner. That would be the naive approach. Actually, that would be statistically incorrect because as I said, correlation here does not imply necessarily imply that such a correlation such a causation exists note that this is an observational study it's just taken the data are there you just observe the data and you just collect the data you cannot randomize this another ex uh, explanation may be that is there may be confounding variables so it's going to be there is an extraneous variable uh, 
uh, that correlates with both X and Y, which I actually talk about. There's a Z here, which is hidden, but it affects X and Y at the same time. It causes X and Y at the same time. So actually you think that the relation is in this way. However, actually there is no relation like, there's no causation like that. There is only relation between X and Y due to the causation of Z to X and Y. So here, for instance, land area is suggested as a possible can candidate for confounding variable. So as land area increases, as you have more land area, both the number of babies increases, both the number of stocks increases. So therefore, when you uh, plot a graph related between those two, you are going to see a correlation. But since this is an observational study, that correlation cannot be used as a, a proof for causation. Okay, so that's all. We are going to continue with uh, numerical examples or numerical explanations in the next lecture.